Hey everybody, welcome back to Sarah J. Awesome. Let me just tell you how much I love all of you. I have been sacrificing the health of my marriage <laughs> to do this video. My husband bought this used uh, standard range Model Y. It's a 2021. He bought it last year. The day that it was dropped off, it smelled like crap. The Tesla Model 3 and Y for sure have some kind of issue where the housing for the cabin filters, it doesn't drain or get rid of the moisture all the way after you've uh, created condensation in there from using your AC, your air conditioning. And so over time, the bacteria and mold spores and pollen and all the things like that that get pulled into your cabin filters mixes with all that moisture in there and creates a really disgusting odor that smells like sweaty socks from sweaty boys that play football in junior high and are going through puberty. That's what it smells like. <laughs> it's horrible. I do have five teenage boys, so I will tell you I know what dirty socks smell like. I fixed this issue in my Model 3. It's basically, Tesla tells us when we purchase the car, you should be changing your air filters about once every two years. If you live in a dry climate, that's probably fine. If you live in a humid climate like me, you're going to have to change your AC filters every six months to once a year. I've done all kinds of research on this crap. I don't know exactly what the problem is, but I do know that turning your heater on after you use the AC does prevent the problem from happening. But I've done that and even though it works, it's really freaking annoying. I wish I could set a timer for my heater to come on every single day at night after I've gone to sleep and then turn off after 20 minutes because that would fix the issue. But Tesla has not come up with that. They really need to. Somebody needs to fix this issue. It's really annoying. My suggestion to you to prolong the life of clean, fresh air filters and AC coils to get the freshness to last the longest is at the end of every summer, after you're mostly done using the air conditioning, which creates the condensation and creates the problem, change your air filters. Because in the winter time, it's going to be dry because you're having dry heat go through there and you won't have this problem with the moisture and the bacteria growing and causing odor. So change your filters every year after you're done with using your AC on a daily basis. You know, I'd rather be laying down on my bed than doing this, but here I am. It has to be done. So I've been putting this off since my husband got this car and letting him drive around with a stinky AC system because I've been wanting to do this video and I haven't been actually wanting to do the video though, because it's a lot of work. So we're going to get right to it. You don't really need that many supplies. Um, I love these Breathe Easy filters that I got. I, I got these for my Tesla Model 3 as well. I am not sponsored by them in any way. I did a lot of research and these are the ones that I fell in love with. They're cheap. They work. I've had no issues with them in my Model 3 and they look exactly the same as the Tesla ones. So I highly suggest these. Next we have Next Zet Clima Cleaner. I like this one over the Coolit. I haven't used Coolit. I'm not going to because I've had so many other people tell me that they hated it. I love this one. So I will continue using this. someone walking over to my neighbor's house. I'm being nosy because I'm expecting someone to show up. Um, also, you will need a T20 bit right here, and then obviously something to hold that bit. Then to get the little screws out from underneath the glove box, you can use your fingernail, um, but ladies, if you have acrylic nails, it is going to mess them up. And, or you can use a butter knife or you can use a flathead screwdriver if you want to get real fancy, but my kids lost that, so we will not be using a flathead screwdriver. I'll probably just Let's get started. I will show you how to do this. It's not that bad, I promise. All right, first thing we're gonna do is remove this um, panel down here. And it's basically just a bunch of these little plastic clips. All right, so you just stick it in this little notch here. It's actually my, my grandmother's butter knives that I inherited putting them to good use. Just kidding. I'm not going to mess them up. They've been through a lot. If they're not messed up by now, they're not going to get messed up. So you just kind of twist it, pull these down. They may come out in two pieces. They may come out in one piece. Either way is fine. Just make sure you get both pieces out. I will tell you how to put them back together later. It's not hard. Have it like this to put inside the hole. And what that does is this allows this to compress down. See how it's going like that? So it can slip in the hole. So you slip in the hole and then once it's in the hole, then you push this in and that's how that works. 
and then it spreads apart and that's what keeps it held in. So it's taken back out. You just stick your fingernail in here, pull that out, and then you just pull the whole piece out. And you just have to look at um, these notches and just make sure you put it in the right way. Sorry if I'm mouth breathing into the camera. This is the last one. Also, if you're doing this without filming, it is so much easier. So I'm making it look a lot harder than it is because I'm filming. Okay, then we're just gonna pull this thing down. This was actually not installed back all the way. Push this way towards the front of the car with your fingers a little bit, and then just kind of pull down. There's a little piece of plastic that slides into this. So you don't want to pull the back straight down because then you'll break this clip. But if you just pull the front of it down, this part, pull the front of it straight down towards the ground and then slide it out the rest of the way straight out. And then this will pull out of this little slot right here. And we don't need to disconnect the speaker and all that. I know other people have done that. It's really not necessary. Next, we're gonna pop this side panel out. This is the side of the center console. Okay, so once you've removed this guy, just set him to the side. That was not me farting. That was my elbow in the seat, just FYI. <laughs> you can actually reach your hand back here on this car, which in the Model 3, I think was a little bit harder. But you can actually just run your fingers down here and pull straight out. This car does fart a lot, you know. Just running your hand from the back all the way around the sides to pull it straight out. I'm gonna get my hand down in here. It's best to get your fingers on either side of each clip if you can to make sure you're pulling straight out. I have one guy in the middle, it's being tough. Ugh. There we go. That guy, the little white piece right there, that's the one that's giving me trouble. So I'm gonna have to get my hand around there and pull straight out as much as I can. This is angled too much to pull it straight out, so I'm gonna have to wiggle my hand down in here. There we go. So this one on this thing was really difficult, and this one, but what I did was, if they're being really difficult, you can take your, not, your butter knife, your grandmother's butter knife, um, or flathead screwdriver and kind of push down on these plastic clips like this. And that's what I did to kind of release it a little bit because it, it compresses these clips. These clips just come off like this, watch. Whoops. That's what the clips look like in here. And then they just go back on like this. I'm trying to do this one handed and film. See, no clips were harmed. That's good, they don't have any that slide in. So you just pull this whole side panel straight out. On the driver's side in the Model 3, there's something where it, there's like a hook here that slides in. So you have to pop everything straight out and then pull it back and out. But this one on the Model Y, pull it straight out like this, every single clip. All right, so this is what it looks like. And this is the door that we're gonna remove. And this is amazing because they moved this screw down to the bottom. In my 2020, it used to be at the top and it was a freaking annoying little screw to get out of there because you could not get up in here and unscrew it easily. So super excited about that. All right, we're gonna see if it's still a T20 little bit. I think that it is, but we're about to find out. And it is magnetized. I highly recommend getting a magnetized one. I can hardly even pull this out because last time I dropped it down inside of there, I was able to get it, but uh, it was annoying. See, you just unscrew this little screw at the bottom. Whoops, sorry guys and girls. It's your little T20 screw right there. It'd be real nice if they could put a Phillips, but that's okay. I'm gonna take this door off. Now, I'm willing to bet that this guy sold his car because it smelled like crap and he didn't know how to fix it. And he was like, this is a brand new car with 20,000 miles on it. Why does it smell like this? Oh my gosh, did you see all that dust come out? I bet that's mold spores. I'm sure these have never been changed. And yeah, they're freaking disgusting. Pull up the second one like this, it just slides up. And then you're just gonna rip that sucker out of there. It's really hard to do it without getting stuff everywhere. 
The bottom one is always worse. You can see how much stuff is in the bottom one because gravity pulls everything down. Look at all this stuff in here. So when this gets wet from the condensation from your AC system, it starts getting really stinky. Look how bad that is. Look at all those bugs in there. Disgusting. So yellow should be facing the back and the arrow should be facing the back of the car towards the trunk. That's the way your airflow goes. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. There's a little bit of debris down there, but not too bad. That in the middle, that's your drain hole for the condensation. This back here, those are the fins that go over the AC coils. The AC coils are what get really, really cold and create condensation. All right, so let's go ahead and get our cleaner ready. This stuff right here, which I actually love the smell of. And if you remember from my first video, you may or may not, but I got this stuff in my eyes and all over my face <laughs> and all over my hands. So I will try to be more careful this time. I probably won't film it, but um, it didn't do anything to me. My skin didn't turn red, it wasn't burning. So that's definitely a good thing. <laughs> okay, so what you're gonna be doing is spraying this grid looking thing, the fins. You're gonna start at the top, work your way across from passenger side to driver side, driver side to passenger side, and you're gonna go all the way down from side to side, from the top to the bottom, and soak this whole thing in foam. You just wanna start spraying, moving it back and forth. Try to get all over the fins and coils. Up and down, side to side. Try to really get the far corners over there. You definitely want to get around the edges. Holding my breath. Holy mackerel. This one holds a lot of foam. I thought the can was smaller than last time I used it, but there's like more foam. Keep holding it until it is totally empty. Dang, that is more foam than last time. Holy crap. Also, the next set, I think it has over 10 ounces of stuff and the coolant only has six something ounces of stuff. So you get almost twice as much foam. Let's take a peek here. We did a pretty good job. So we're gonna let that sit. Then after we let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes and let all that foam kind of turn into nothingness, just liquid, we're gonna put the little plastic door back on and we're gonna turn on the air for about 15, 20 minutes and dry it all up in there. So it's 100% dried out. Then we can put our new filters in. So for now, we just sit, <sighs> take a few breaths of fresh air away from those chemicals and breathe. So I'm betting this is about 28,000 miles worth of crap in here. We got the car with about 20,000 miles on it and I don't really think that the guy ever changed it. And then we'll take a look at these Breathe Easy cabin filters. They're basically exactly the same, except this one is way cheaper and does all the exact same stuff as that one. All right, this is what it's looking like in here after about five minutes. The foam starts dissipating pretty quickly. We did get all the way to the very top of it, which is great. And it all falls down. So that's why you wanna get most of it at the top. It's all gonna go down. And we also got in the front of the compartment. So you can see all that dripping out underneath there. That is our next Zet Clima Cleaner. It drips out from right behind basically the front wheel axle, if you will. How does my hair look? Does it look okay? I can't really tell. Just sitting here waiting for this to 
um, dry and all the foam to dissipate. I did not tell my husband that I'm doing his filters finally today after he's been waiting for months and months with a stinky car. So hopefully he will be happy when he gets in here and it doesn't smell like crap anymore. I feel bad I waited so long, but you guys, I'm burnt out and I'm tired. <laughs> ah, all these teenagers and puppies are killing me. Not really. I'm okay. But um, yeah, so happy to finally be doing this. It's, it is annoying having to do this, but um, I would much rather do it myself. I mean, I kind of personally enjoy it. I would enjoy it a lot more if I wasn't filming because that just makes it so much harder to get all the shots for you guys. But next time I do this, I won't have to film it because I've already done it once on both cars. But um, honestly, if you're not filming and you know what you're doing, it's super easy. Literally a child could do this. It's not hard and it's not dangerous and it's not gonna mess up your car. It's going to be fine, I promise. And it will get rid of the smell for at least six months in, in my experience. Now, the Model 3, um, I got the smell after about 17,000 miles. I changed it. Excuse me, I just ate a lot of Chinese food. <laughs> um, and now I have 40,000 miles on my car. And um, it did start to get stinky one more time about seven months after I changed the filters and did this. But I just started turning the heater on um, after I would use the AC a lot for about 20 minutes when I got home. Like after I'm just laying in bed doing whatever, I set a timer on my phone for 10, 15, 20 minutes, turn the heater on full blast in my car, and then just remember to turn it off because it does drain the battery a lot. Um, and that will just dry out the whole HVAC system so that you don't get this uh, buildup of moisture and bacteria in there. And that actually, that actually fixed it. It did go away. So I've only changed the filters once in my car in 40,000 miles. And every time it starts getting a little stinky, I just start putting that heater on for 15, 20 minutes every night um, for a while. And it, it gets rid of it. So um, if you if you did that every night, this wouldn't even happen because you'd be drying it out completely every night after AC use during the day. But I'm just, I'm honestly, I'm too lazy and tired for that. <laughs> so it'd be really great if Tesla could do this and find a way for us to set a timer for how long we want to have the heater on in the car because one time I forgot about it and it like drained my battery like 20% because I forgot I forgot that I left the heater on in the car to dry out the HVAC system so anyway annoying it's just annoying but it's way cheaper to do it this way literally anyone can do it I, I'm, I'm telling you like an eight-year-old could do this if you just told him what to do so um don't be intimidated Tesla does not need to come do this for you you don't need to spend that much this cost me like 30 bucks to do this myself super easy you guys just do it yourself if you need help and you live in Houston I'll come help you <laughs> just message me I will come help you do this I've been thinking like I should have like a, a Tesla meet in Houston and like everyone can come and I'll help everyone like I'll do a class on how to change your filters <laughs> I don't I don't know like would people come to that I don't know if they would or not but it'd probably be a huge hit I mean I'll do it for free I don't care I have nothing else to do this is my only hobby so Anyway, I think it's about time to dry this out completely and then we'll put the new filters in and we'll be good as gold. So this is after 20 minutes of just letting the foam sit there and kill all the bacteria. Okay, so we're just gonna pop our little door on. That's right. You don't need to screw it in, just pop it on. Maybe hold your foot down there so it doesn't blow out. And then we will Turn the, oops, turn the AC on. Oh, oh God, that's dropped. Oh. When this is gray, you're pulling in fresh air from outside the car. When this is blue, you're circulating the air through the cabin. It's not pulling in fresh air from outside, but right now I need fresh air. So I'm gonna pull some fresh air in from outside. The air intake is right here um, on the passenger side in the car underneath the hood. Okay, let me just explain something real quick with the drying process. 15 to 20 minutes is good. And it doesn't really matter if you have circulated air on or not. I just prefer to have fresh air coming in when I'm doing this because you're going to get that um, really strong chemical smell on here. It doesn't smell bad. It, it doesn't stink. It's just the initial like waft, especially if you're, you know, locked up in the car or something. Um, <laughs> I mean, I have the door open, but... Um, it doesn't matter if it's on circulate or pulling in fresh air. The only thing that matters that you do not want to do is when it's hot outside and you're changing these filters, you don't want to hit this AC button and have it super cold because then you're just creating more condensation in there when you're trying to dry it out. 
So the main thing is just have that AC button off and have the fan on high. The rest of it, the temperature, the circulate, none of that really matters. Just so you know. All right, so this is what it looks like. After 20 minutes of having the air on full blast, you can see that it's completely dry in here. No moisture, so it is time to put the new air filters in. Woohoo! All right, so air filter number one, you just wanna make sure that the tab is over here on the top. So that way, when this drops down later, you'll be able to take it out. Yellow should be facing you. And you just wanna shove this down in there and then it'll drop down. That's the tab for the bottom one. Push the second one in. Ugh. It's so easy, you guys. Um, this is one reason that I prefer these air filters. If you had the hard plastic ones that people advertise, they're really nearly impossible to get in here. Okay, now it's in. So we have our new filter. We have our new filters in now. And now we can put our little door back on right here. You see this little groove? There's a little plastic piece that fits down in between here. Oh, it's because my tab. The tab was in the way. All right. Ugh. Sorry, the audio is gonna suck. Anybody wanna send me a uh, lapel mic that works really well? That'd be great. Oh. I've had them before and they didn't work well, so. Oh wait, I guess I need a screw on here. Ah! Where's my screw? <sighs> Here's a screw. Screw it in with your finger a little bit. Man, I'm so happy they changed this. You know, they have to go through a lot of work to change this. The machine's making this whole area to flip that screw around for us. It's really nice. <sighs> I'm a little out of breath from hanging over like that. It's really nice they put that on the bottom though. It makes it so much easier. All right, now for the side panel. Never mind the leftover uh, hand sanitizer from, you know, the pandemic. So these two guys right here, these are the hardest ones. They are a freaking pain in the butt. <laughs> so we're gonna put those in first. So you just go like this. Can you see everything? You see what I'm doing? Okay, start with the bottom. Line up those two guys first, cause I'm telling you they are a freaking pain in the butt. you can see I lined up the guys that are super annoying first and then we're just gonna punch it make sure it's lined up punch it <laughs> it's like an 80s song punch it punch it so just line up all the white clips you can see that one there he pops in easy these are all easy line it up pop them in Easiest clips I have ever seen on any vehicle. I love it so much. I've never broken any clips. Just pop these guys in. Make sure they're lined up. Let me get a good angle here. Whoops. All right, we got that back in. No clips were broken. Everything is good. Start from the bottom and work your way up. That way you can see if you got every clip in the right spot before you punch it. Now we're gonna put this guy in. And you see this thing right there? That has to slide over that. It's gonna be the only complicated part. It's not complicated, but slide that in. Take a peek, make sure everything's lined up, popped in and then we'll put our little clips. All right, I got it up there more flush than the last person who ever did this. Now we're gonna put our little plastic clips in. All right, so we have four plastic clips. One right here, just make sure it's, you know, pushed apart when you push it in and then push the little button in like that. Again, make sure it's separated like this. Poke it in a hole, pop it in. Poke it in a hole. Oh no, we lost the hole, we can't find the hole. Just kidding, it's fine. As long as you can see the hole. There we go. 
And last one over here. That. Pop it in. And we are done. Look how easy that was. It wasn't that bad, right? I need some water. I have AC cleaner in my throat. Should we put this the sexy hair back? That's it. It's not that hard. Literally anyone can do this. Um, the smell is already gone. When I'm cleaning it out, like when you first hit the um, the fan button in the HVAC system, the AC or whatever, turn it on, and you're blowing out all the um, stuff and drying it up in there, it smells amazing. I personally love the smell of the next set climate cleaner. People have said they cool it. smells like um, spearmint or, yeah, spearmint, which I hate the smell of spearmint. I'm a peppermint girl myself, um, so I'm not going to use that. And they said it just smells like musty spearmint after a while. This one smells like rubbing alcohol and kind of just like a fresh-ish scent. Um, it smells like it's really doing something. And everything already smells fine, perfect. So um, I'm sure my husband will be super happy and so will my kids. Because every time we get in the car, we're like, oh! It smells so bad. Like it's literally the worst part of being a Tesla owner is dealing with this freaking smell. It's ridiculous. It's pathetic, <laughs> um, but it's not that bad. And it's like $35 to fix it yourself. So not that big of a deal anymore. When I first dealt with this problem, I was ready to rip my hair out and sell my car. And then once I got to the bottom of it, did a lot of research, went all through this, you know, went through all this myself. Um, it's not a big deal anymore and I'm willing to help anyone. So I'm happy with these products. Again, not sponsored, spent my own money on them. I don't have an affiliate link for them. <laughs> I mean, it's, I get them on Amazon. So very happy with this procedure. I will be doing it forever. <laughs> um, so we'll see how long it lasts, but for my car, it's been lasting for quite a while. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope that it's not intimidating anymore. I promise it'll be okay. It'll get rid of the smell. You'll be fine. I've already done all the research for you. Just get these filters get this cleaner it's the same cleaner that they use at tesla they've also used the cool it brand do it yourself let me know if you have any questions i'm happy to help anytime everyone have a great week i hope you have great smelling ac systems after this and i will see y'all next time